Would you guys believe me if I told you this was an all-electric boat that I'm on? Because it is. This is the Arc One, an all-electric boat that is really shaking up things in the boat industry. Electric boats have been around now since the 80s, but in a limited way. You may have seen these Duffy boats before that are all electric, but they certainly cannot handle the ocean waters. I think when people think of electric boats today, they think of the small Duffies, which are great boats for going two or three miles an hour on, mm -hmm. on the water. It's a much different challenge to go make those higher power boats. Duffy boats just don't have the power to go out in the ocean in LA, and they're not a good alternative for people that want some speed. The Arc One is a real alternative option to a speed boat, and just take a look at it. It's a very modern approach to an old school hobby. Driving around this thing feels like an iPhone. It's got the touch screen, the white interior seats, very similar to electric cars that you see these days. It's noticeably different than the other boats out there. This is a 24 foot boat measured bow all the way to the end of the swim platform. The layout of this boat is that there are two battery packs underneath the floor right now. There's one under my feet here and one under where the captain sits. Those battery packs are each larger than anything that you'd find in an electric sedan today. And importantly, they support the floor of this boat. They are providing value outside of just storing energy. They're actually supporting the, the structure of the boat itself. And then there's a motor that sits in between it. Other features, all of these seats hinge up to provide storage. We have wireless phone chargers throughout the cabin of the boat, a pop-up ski pylon for anyone that wants to wakeboard or inner tube or water ski behind the boat, a touchscreen display that has everything from navigation maps to a rear view camera, and obviously awesome music. We took the boat out for a test drive to see how it did. Is there a seat belt? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Life jacket. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Okay, whoa, okay. Wow. So we're at 30, 30 miles an hour, 35. Wow, oh my God. And I was blown away. This thing can go very fast. And it's very easy for a beginner like me to drive around. If you go like, try to just absolutely pin the throttle on a gas boat, what you often do is flood the engine with gas. Oh. What that's doing is it's opening a valve and releasing a lot of gas really rapidly, yeah. and the engine can't keep up with that. Again, oh. here, you can just pin that throttle down and it's gonna do exactly the right thing to accelerate mm. you and make sure you're having a good time. One thing you notice is this boat is so quiet. You hardly notice it's on, kind of like an electric car, which is really nice, it's very pleasant. You can actually chat and hear each other. When you go fast, it is louder, but it's really the wind noise more than anything that makes it loud. Up here, you don't have the wind on you, so it's like, it's really chill. From my test drive on the boat, I was really impressed with everything that it has to offer. But all this technology comes at a price, $300,000 to be exact. Very steep considering the size of this boat. Take a look at other boats for sale in the same price range, you're gonna get a full yacht, but you're gonna have a lot more maintenance expenses on those boats. There are all these sayings in the marine industry about how like the best day of a boat owner's life are the day you buy it and the day you sell it. Yeah, I've heard that one. <laughs> it's because they're a maintenance headache mm. and our boats are far more reliable. Similar to an electric car, when you switch out an engine that's really complicated, like look at all these parts in this engine, for a battery, you eliminate a lot of potential problems. I've had an electric car for just about five years and I've had no maintenance, no oil changes, none of that. So the same should be true for a boat. However, realistically, anything that's sitting in salt water 24 seven is gonna have some maintenance. You're not gonna have all of it eliminated. But in theory, this should be a lot more reliable than a gas boat. The Arc One is very expensive for a few reasons. It's not just because they can, it's because these boats are quite expensive to produce, in large part due to the fact that they need a lot of battery power and batteries are expensive. Boats, generally speaking, require a lot of power because they're moving through water rather than air. That means that you need a really powerful motor, but it also means that you need to store a lot of energy on the boat to actually be able to use your boat for a while. Most boats today do that with really big gas tanks. For us, the challenge is how do you go do that with really large battery packs? The battery packs that are on the Arc One are significantly larger than anything that you would see in, say, an electric sedan. Uh, your right. average electric sedan has a battery pack that's 60 kilowatt hours. This is 220 kilowatt hours, so it's, it's oh, so multiple it's like four times. times yeah, like three to four Model times larger. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. And that's because boats in general, gas or electric, take a ton of energy to move through water. Most people don't know this, but boats consume 
more gas than a fully loaded semi truck. Because mm, the water is so much because, harder to exactly, move through. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, think about when you swim in a pool. It takes so much more energy to move from point A to point B in water than if you were to walk that distance. And the same is true for boats. It takes a lot of energy, so you need a lot of battery power. That translates to a lot of fuel costs. Mm. And when you suddenly go over to you know an electric powertrain, your fuel costs drop by you know, a factor of 10. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about charging. The cool thing is a lot of marinas already have electricity wired into their docks for live aboard boats. Charging is a much easier problem to solve than it is for electric cars, which want to you want to hop in your electric car and go anywhere in the country. With a boat, they tend to start and end at the same place, which makes charging a little easier. But also, the marinas out here tend to be already be wired for the type of power that you would use to recharge them. Look around a lot of the larger marinas and there are outlets all over the place. I mean, remember when I made that video with Bryce? He showed me how they got power to their boat. This is pretty common anywhere that has live aboard permits for boats. It's nice that in most cases you don't need to get anything installed like you would for an electric vehicle and you don't need to go to marina gas stations. So the experience that you have as a boater is you use your boat exactly how you want to use it. Three, four, five, hours out on the water with your friend. You come back, you plug it in, you walk away, and the next morning it is fully charged and ready to go again for you. Speaking of charge, this battery will last you three to five hours of boating depending on how fast you're going. Of course, the faster you drive around, the faster you're gonna kill the battery. If you're just slowly cruising around a marina, it's gonna last you pretty much all day. This is definitely a con that it maxes out at around five hours because of course, gas boats can potentially go out on the water for a lot longer. But I actually think three to five hours is a good compromise because any longer and the price would of course be even higher. Uh, That's pretty crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> As you can imagine, building an electric boat does come with some unique challenges, one of them being that the batteries are super heavy. So then you need to compensate for the fact that you have thousands of pounds of battery sitting on this boat. You need to take that weight out of something else. And that's where the aluminum hull on the Arc-1 and, and kind of our manufacturing techniques on future oh, boats yeah. comes in. The aluminum hull is perfect for taking off some of that weight, but it does come at a cost. What is a boat typically made out of? Of this size, they're yeah. usually made out of fiberglass. And that's heavier? It's, it's heavier, yeah. particularly the type of fiberglass that's used. There's some mm -hmm. nuance in there, but that type of fiberglass tends to be heavy, not very efficient when it comes to how much strength you get for a given amount of mm -hmm. weight of it. But it's very, you know, cheap to make. It's, uh, you don't need very high skilled labor to do it. Whereas something like this, yeah, it's, it's yeah. more challenging to manufacture. Yeah. The Arc-1 was their first product, and they've actually sold out of all 20 of these boats that they've created. And they're now moving on to a different product. If you view the Arc-1 as our Roadster, the right, next right. model is kind of our Model S. Okay, in the yeah. sense that it's still targeting a premium segment of the yeah. market, but is again intended for mass market audiences in a way that the Arc-1 was not. So the Arc-1, overall my thoughts, very impressive, very powerful, but very expensive. It reminds me of when electric cars were new. The first ever Roadster was, you know, $200,000. And now we have electric cars closer to $30,000. So the price for an electric boat eventually will probably come down, but we're just still in the early days of it. I don't think it's gonna come down that much though, considering how much battery power you need to move through water. I mean, it's the equivalent of buying battery packs for four electric sedans. So kind of tough to get the price down on that unless we have some newer battery technology. There are other companies working on electric boats or just electric motors though. There's one in Seattle called Purecraft and they have an electric motor that you can put on what's originally a gas boat. You can switch out the motor for this. And it's a lot less expensive. With two battery packs, it's closer to 30 or $40,000. It looks like it's not as powerful as the Arc-1, but a lot more affordable and great if you're just slowly cruising around a lake. I love to see that companies are working on this because boating, while it's not necessary and it is a luxury, it's something that people are still gonna do and it is a huge environment polluter. The fact that driving a speedboat is equivalent to a semi-truck, it takes a lot of energy. The maintenance headache of gas boats just seem like they're not a great product. So I'm all for electric boats. I think they are the future, but it's gonna be a while before the price is really realistic for most people. I'm gonna keep my eye on these companies. Let me know what you guys thought of the Arc-1. Comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!